third graders. I think my Welcome mic back. Might be off. Oh. It is. Is that better, Mr. Kevin? There's Mrs. There Wally. There she is. There you are. Welcome back, Mrs. Wally. <laughs> I just realized I didn't turn it back on. Oops. <laughs> How are you, friends? Let's check in with our zones. Yeah. Before we get going. Let's do that. Okay. Take a look, friends. Take it our chart. How are you feeling today? What zone are you in? And why do you feel that way? Hmm. Mr. Kevin? What yeah, zone are you in today? I'm in the green zone today. Feeling pretty good. Why feeling... are you feeling so good? Well, you know, because uh, we got a little sunshine going out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, love my job, love teaching with the TV teachers. Yeah, it's pretty great, isn't it? Getting mm -hmm. it all out to the students. Mm -hmm. We love teaching with you, Mr. Kevin. We love it. Mm -hmm. We do. And how about you? How are your zones? I'm in the green zone. I'm in the green zone too. Yeah, I think the sunshine, I just went out for a little walk outside, two little walks. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> sorry, thank you for trying to go find that, Miss Oslin. <laughs> but it was nice to get some movement, get some sunshine, some fresh air. Yeah. Feels good. Yeah, I'm feeling really good today too. My, my mood is good, it's nice out. I feel really organized for our lessons today. Yeah. We had a great planning session last night we and did. prepping session, it was yep. really good. And I'm really excited, actually, for what we're going to do today with our big book. Yes. I'll tell you when we get there. Okay. But before we do that, let's <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's review. We should have played that game. One, two, three. Don't interrupt me. Well, right? I was trying not to interrupt. And I was like, okay, she's not going to go. She not I can't see it? your mouth. I'm going to start. <laughs> we both started at the same time. Oh my. See, and we can just laugh it off. That's a conflict solver. Is to laugh yeah, it off. Yeah, you don't right? have to take things so seriously no. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, let's review our three personal sh standards. Standards? To standards. <laughs> today this is not starting off very well, Ms. Oslin. Suddenly, I'm slipping into the silly yellow zone. Sorry. <laughs> back to green, back to green. Back to green, focus. Our three personal standards today and every day mm -hmm. we agree to? Show respect, respect make, make good decisions, decisions solve problems. problems. And we're having to do that a lot today. Yes. I definitely have had to solve a lot of problems with my teaching mm -hmm. and make good decisions about being prepared and ready. Yes. Like I brought my science notebook and my pen. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have something to write on because you're mm -hmm. for sure going to want to take notes today. Mm -hmm. And my brain's here ready to learn. Yes. And one thing that we do to show respect is Mrs. Wally and I divide some of our duties that we have to do. We do, don't we? And we show each other respect by doing what we say we're going to do. Yes, and we also show each other respect by asking, is this something you enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. Or figuring out, you know, we both do something we don't enjoy and then we both give each other something we do enjoy mm -hmm. and so it feels like the work is even. Yes, mm -hmm. like we both said we would bring things for our experiment today. And we both brought them. And we both brought them. Because if one of us didn't bring them. Ooh, that would be a problem on our teamwork. We wouldn't be able to do the experiment. Mm -hmm. So, we had to work as a team. We did. Okay, are you ready for our phenomena? I am. Here we go. Okay, uh, friends, get your journals out. Get ready to write down some of the things you notice and wonder. I'm getting mine out. Be ready to write. And this is a video phenomena. Yes, there's no audio. It's just to watch. We're just going to watch okay. it. Okay, ready? Yes. Yeah. It's called Tears in Space. Take one minute, what do you notice and what are you wondering?
I went over there. Do we get some bonus think time? Got some bonus That's think time. That's never a bad thing. One. Never a bad thing. This was so interesting to mm -hmm. me. I I was thinking about forces. Mm -hmm. And we talked about gravity being mm -hmm. a force in the universe and how it's different, the pull of gravity or the attraction of things is different depending on where you are in the universe. Mm. I noticed that he's in a spaceship. Yes. It looks like some kind of shuttle. Mm -hmm. I was noticing as I'm watching, what is that white thing floating by his shoulder? I didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that part of the tears coming out of his face? Or is that something else that's just floating around? I was actually very distracted by it almost the entire time. It's just to distract time. you. Because I could see it being like some of the water, but then why is the water in a bubble? Yeah. Like, I know when I cry, it like, I know there's a tear, but it like yeah. rolls down, but that's just like sitting on his face moving yeah, around. Yeah, it's not flowing in the same way. Mr. Kevin, what were you thinking? Well, I was looking at that little white thing, too. <laughs> I'm not shocked by that, Mr. Kevin. You and I <laughs> you know, have very squirrel. similar brains. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was thinking that it's probably a droplet of water that came off of the larger globule yeah, of water yeah. that is right under his eye. And, uh, and that, it's, that it just, you know, it, it somehow got ejected and and it isn't joining the rest of the friends there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've know. seen videos of astronauts like drinking mm -hmm. like Capri Suns and stuff in space and they squirt it out and it's like this glob of, and then they like eat the bubble of water. Oh, that's it's really cool. That is cool. But I wonder why. I wonder. Why does water behave that way with the forces in space? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Because it certainly doesn't behave that way here on Earth. It might be something that would be worth investigating. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right. Another thing about this, there's no down in space. Oh. And the astronauts have to be very careful. Their diet is really restricted. Because if you think about it, when we eat something spicy, it goes down, right? It goes yeah. down to our stomach. Well, when there's no down, something might just sit there. Oh, I never thought of that. And cause you gastrointestinal Stress. Yeah, like how do you get your food to digest if they're, well, I guess you have muscles that uh, push it you, down. You have muscles that push it down, but. But no. I bet gravity plays a role in how we digest our food. It yes. does. Huh. I have never thought of that. What's our essential question? Our essential today? question is how do forces help us solve problems? It's a little different. Very different. So we learned what forces were and yes. how it makes things move by yes. a push or a pull on something. Yes. So now we're gonna start this investigation of how do then forces help humans solve problems. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to go over some of our big science words here in a minute. Yes. And then we are going to do some experiments along with a big book. So instead of just showing you pictures, we thought we would act out what the big book was saying. Yes. It's gonna be super fun. We're very excited. Mm -hmm. Now. So you know and are prepared, your assignment today is to write in one paragraph or more, what did you learn about forces today? What are some ways you think we can use forces to help us solve problems? So, so. it's important you have your notebook out and that you're writing ideas down because mm -hmm. you're gonna need to put those ideas together in a paragraph. Mm -hmm. And remember, paragraphs start with a starting sentence where you introduce what mm -hmm. it is that you're gonna be writing about. You give supporting details details and sentences mm -hmm. that follow, and then you conclude with a sentence that wraps it all up with, with a, a bow. Nice bow. And we're gonna give you an example of that today with our mm -hmm. book. I've split up the paragraphs into a couple slides so you can read the right. words with me, but we're gonna give you some ideas of some paragraphs you could write about forces. All right. <laughs> He's ready. It's time for our big science word. <laughs> now, last week we did force. Force. A, a push, push or, or a pull, pull on something. something. We also learned about gravity. Gravity is the force by which all objects in the universe are attracted to each other. 
We also learned friction, which is yes. the rubbing of objects against each other. And Mrs. Wally gave us a good example of when mm -hmm. we rub our hands together, that creates friction. And in our book, we learned that if there's less friction, things move easier. And if there's more frictions, things don't move as easy. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna see some good examples of that today. Oh, we are, I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. One of our new words that we're gonna to learn today is propel. Say propel. Propel. Think about what might that word mean? Hmm. Well, I know a propeller moves a boat. A boat. That's exactly what I was thinking. Something about... Makes the boat move. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Or a plane. Our final meaning is to cause to move forward. But I know a propeller, you can put it in reverse and move backwards. Mm -hmm. But to propel to is propel. moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's our sentence. The paddle propelled the canoe through the water. Ah. Moved it forward. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We have and another word. Let me just add that the yeah. word propelled, it's just fun to say, isn't it? Propelled. It, it propelled. Is propelled. Propel. Yeah, <laughs> it is fun to say. Okay, we have another word. Atmosphere. Ooh. Ooh. I think we need to clap the syllables in that one. Atmosphere. Oh, probably already. Atmosphere. Atmosphere. That's a science word. That is. Mm -hmm. What must it mean? I hear people say, in the depths of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I've heard in math, a sphere. Oh, a circle? Is a solid shape. Mm. So I thought round like a sphere or in the atmosphere, out there. In the air? In the air. What is it, Miss Aslan? It is the gases surrounding the Earth or similar objects in outer space. Oh, so like different planets might have different atmospheres. Mm -hmm. mm. They might have different gases that surround them. I know Mars does. Different gases than Earth. Mars has oxygen, but it has a gas mixed with the oxygen that makes it deadly to breathe. Oh. And I only know this because my niece Hayden, she yes. loves space. Yes. And she wants to grow up and be an engineer for Mars. Mm. And she wants to create a machine that turns the gases on Mars into breathable air. She's a third grader. I bet she will use <laughs> forces to solve a problem. Awesome. Oh, yeah. She, she knows all about forces. She loves forces. It's mm -hmm. one of her favorite things. Yes, Mr. Kevin? Just a, a quick note here on the word atmosphere. Yes. The Greek uh, root of that word, atmos, mm -hmm. that means vapor. Oh. oh, atmos means the vapor, which is like a gas. Yeah, vapor ball. A That's vapor ball. What, a vapor ball. That's a more ball fun to of say. Vapor. I like vapor ball better than atmosphere. I do too. I'm in the vapor ball. <laughs> <laughs> Humans can breathe because of the special vapor ball around <laughs> the, the Earth. Earth. <laughs> it's a great visual. It really is. Uh -huh. I can picture it. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. That was awesome. Yes, and I bet our third graders will forever remember that atmosphere, atmosphere is, is a vapor, a vapor ball. ball. <laughs> Here's another word, static. And this word we discovered has several different meanings. Mm -hmm. And Miss Austin had to say, Miss Abali, when you were planning this, which meaning were you wanting to use? Mm -hmm. Because the multiple meanings could all be used they could. in force and motion. They could. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's really important. We have to think about context. Right. So when we read where this word is, we're going to really be able to tell. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about when I do laundry mm -hmm. and everything sticks together. Yep. In your dryer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Call that static, right? Yep of or having to do with electrical charges within an object. And it's a force that sticks it together. Yes, an electrical force. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about static clothes sticking together, they stick together because there's an electrical charge. Pulling them together. Yes, mm. very interesting. Yes, Mr. Kevin? I was just gonna say the other uh, uh, definition of static is a, a body that is not in motion. Yes. So it is static, it's, right. it's staying put. And, and that's why Miss Austin was like, Mrs. Wally, which one did you want to use today? <laughs> did you mean to not, not be move? moving? Or did you mean the electricity pulling things together? Because they're both very relevant to forces mm -hmm. in motion. Mm -hmm. uh, the sentence I came up with was, in the winter, my hair has static electricity after I dry it. Or even oh, today, yeah. I was walking and my ponytail was rubbing on my coat. It was. 
you know, I've had a time where I was wearing a dress and I had nylons on. Oh. And it was the worst day because it just kept sticking to my yep. nylons. Oh, it was yep. awful. There was an electrical charge. There, there was. I it? couldn't get rid of it. Yes. It just really wanted to be there. Yes. All right. So we're going to do the big book. We're going to do All the big right. book. Oh, we're going to review our champ. Champ first. Okay. I think we've got it down by now. We do, but let's sing it anyway. <laughs> okay. I don't know what you've been told. Forces in motion are in control. On the playground, we see them work. Having more weight can be a perk. Sound off. Forces. Sound off. Motion. One, two, two three, three, four. Push, push pull. pull. The harder you push, the higher you go. Drag your feet to make you slow. Gravity and friction are the key. To move or stop most things with ease. Sound off. Forces. Sound off. Motion. One, One two, two, three, four. four. Energy. Energy. Okay, yesterday we read, or last time, excuse me, we read the book Balanced and Unbalanced Forces mm -hmm. by Jenna Winterberg. We learned about a lot of different types forces. We did. We're going to read another book today. And what you're going to be thinking about is how is the information in this different text similar to or different from what we read in Balanced and Unbalanced Forces? Mm -hmm. This is something that scientists and readers and writers and mathematicians do, is you think about your sources and you think about what information is the author giving you? And is another author confirming that same information? Right. Or providing you with more or different information? That's correct. Or maybe information that contradicts. Maybe they disagree with each maybe other. Maybe they disagree with each other. And, and then that's you have when to, it gets really interesting. It does. You have to do some thinking about why is your author writing that book? And then you have to go back and look for some more books to confirm who's right. Mm -hmm. Part of the scientific process. Well, you might hear someone say something like peer-reviewed journal, yes. and that's what's happening there. Someone writes something they think is true, mm -hmm. and then all the experts in the field read it, compare it to what they've researched, and decide if it's actually true or not. Mm -hmm. So the new text we're going to read today is The Important Thing, the important thing Forces in Motion. <laughs> <laughs> Typo. <laughs> <laughs> the Important Thing About, about forces, forces in Motion. motion. It was adapted by Sally Fox in 2017. And Mrs. Wally didn't type it correctly. That's okay. Sorry, friends. The word about was static. <laughs> <laughs> it was. So we have a table of contents. This is one of those great text features. Mm -hmm. Tells us Now, we we're going to go in order today. Okay. But you didn't have to. No. We could learn, we could do the introduction. Mm -hmm. We could do providing forces. We could do Sir Isaac Newton. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to learn more about mm -hmm. him. Invisible forces. Ooh, that's interesting. Friction and then the glossary. Okay. Now, this book is going to come to life for you. Yes. We're going to read it, and as we read it, we're going to stop and start doing actions and doing forces so we can see if it, what the book is saying is true. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Now, you need to have your journal out because, mm -hmm. remember, you're going to have to write a paragraph. So you might want to start jotting down the things you see us doing mm -hmm. or the things you read in the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, a lot of these words you can read. So we do want you trying to read along with us. Yes, and you're going to notice there's a pattern to the book. Oh. And it's an important pattern. That'll make it really easier, easier to read when there's a pattern. Yes. The important thing about forces in motion is that forces are all around us, and they are the cause of all motion in the universe. Hmm. An object cannot move unless there is a force causing it to move. Verify, we learned that earlier. That is true. Look around, everywhere you look, things are moving. This movement is called motion. Objects can spin, slide, jump, bounce, rock, and swing. I'm thinking about that smoke behind us. Yes. It keeps moving. Just watch it. It's moving up, right above my head. It looks like yeah. I've got smoke coming out of are my head. Are you in head. the red zone? Nope, I'm not, <laughs> but it looks like I am. So it's interesting that that smoke is rising straight up. That means there must not be much wind out there forcing yes. it either direction. Yes. Motion is all around you, even inside you, as your blood moves through your body. I've never thought, it, that reminds me of what Mr. Kevin said about digestion in space. Yeah, but we can feel our blood moving through our body. Oh. If you've ever heard someone talk about their pulse, yes. they're counting how many times your blood is pushing through your body in a minute. 
And you can find your pulse by taking your two fingers and putting it here on your wrist. You gotta search for it sometimes. You can feel yeah, it. I found it. Or you can put it right here. Be careful because you have important veins and arteries right here. Kind of up right here. I can feel it. Our pulse is about the same, Miss Oslin. Oh. Looks like our, it. Our hands were going at the same speed. Oh, wow. It's really interesting. Okay, let's go down. Okay. However, the important, the important thing, thing about forces, forces in motion is that, that forces, forces are all around, around us. And, and they, they are, are the cause of all motion in the universe. universe. Okay, you ready for the next one? The, the important, important thing about forces in motion is that forces are all around us. And they are the cause of all motion in the universe. Hmm. For every motion, there is a force. These forces make things move, stop, and change speed or direction. I meant direction or speed, mm -hmm. I flipped those around. People can provide force, pushing a swing, pulling a rope of tug of war. Let's do it. <laughs> Move our chairs. Now we have to be careful, Miss Oslin. Okay. Now, Miss Oslin, I'm going to give you this side. You have a little bit of an advantage because. Oh, Mr. Kevin found us. He found <laughs> us. Found you now. Oh, I do. Look, I have a hook. Which is a little heavier than oh, mine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let so me if Miss Oslin and I. Woo. Whoa! Oh, whoa! Whoa! <laughs> okay, we're gonna pull with the same force, Miss Oslin. Okay, now I wonder if I can pull Miss Oslin over. I, I'm gonna get low. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that was an unbalanced force. It was force. an unbalanced force. You made me move. Okay. <gasps> can, you can you pull me? Oh, oh she did it! <sighs> okay. Unbalanced force. I had to use more strength. You did, you did. I could feel it. It was like the same, and then all of a sudden she pulled really hard. I wonder so, if we could have, and we won't try it because we didn't practice it, but if we could have like balanced. Oh, I bet we could. Found do a way to. Like balance on one foot? Yeah. Like use the tension to balance? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Woo! Makes it much easier to balance. It does. Okay. Tug of war. It was the only rope I could find in my home. Well, and it's called a toe strap, right? It is, you actually apply force and it actually has a little um, lever that mm -hmm. takes force, it's a ratchet and it forces things. So you can get it really tight over load so they don't move in your car. Teachers, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that when I was watching you tug of war, I didn't have the big picture up on the screen. So I only oh. had the small picture up. Should we do it again? Yeah, yeah do it one more time. Okay, we'll okay. Point, yeah. I think it, it's worth repeating. It's okay. a good experiment. Miss Alden has a little bit of an advantage. She has a little bit more weight on her side. Well, <laughs> I probably have more weight on my side, <laughs> but that's okay. You ready? Yeah. So we're not moving. We're, we're applying the same force. We There's are. no movement. It's balanced. Okay. Oh, well, Miss Swell, you're, you're so strong. <laughs> <laughs> now, Miss Oslin oh. got down, but I was able to pull up a little bit. Is that what you did? Mm -hmm. Oh, you changed the direction. I changed the of direction of my pull to change how it was pulling. How it was you. pulling? Because I tried to get low. That's called lowering my center of gravity. Well, and I just changed your center of and gravity. And she changed by it. Up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Tricky, Smart. tricky. Okay, here we go. Ready? Yep. I'm gonna go like this. Oh, goodness sakes. <laughs> I had to be careful, there's cords there's down there. There's cords, yeah. And if I kick one of them accidentally, like I almost just did, we would lose everything. <laughs> that would be bad. That would not be good. Not okay, good. let's try the balancing one okay. again. Okay, so, lift a foot. Oop. There we go. It helps if we make eye contact. It does. That does help to have something to pull on. Okay, so you That's can use fun. any string or rope you have at home. That's a lot of fun. That was fun. It is a lot of fun. Okay, back to our book. It's kind of fun when it comes alive, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. Uh-oh. So you, you lost your, uh, your place oh, no. in your book there for some reason. Okay, I can do this. Is it, oh, you know, no, nope, the light's on down there. There. Oh, there we go. Problem okay, solved. Good. Or lifting an object. It takes more force to lift pebble. Mm than it does 
to lift? Chili. Chili, because chili doesn't weigh as much. So the force I have to put on them is very different. Mm -hmm. Okay. I always knew pebble was dense. <laughs> <laughs> Machines can provide force. An engine can propel a rocket into space. Motors in mixers and blenders can make things move. Like yes. I'm visualizing that in my head right now. Mm -hmm. Push the button on the blender and the things move. Nature can provide force. Breezes make leaves flutter. Ocean waves makes mm -hmm. boat bob up and down. Earthquakes make the ground shake. Now, I'm noticing I'm feeling a breeze. Yes, that's why I put my hand up. Come in this window and I'm looking at the smoke out there and it's changed. Oh, it has. Oh. It's starting to like move. Yeah. It's not it's just not straight, straight up, up anymore. Isn't oh. that interesting? There are forces all around us. There are forces all around us. However, However the, the important, important thing about forces in motion is that forces are all around us. And they, they are, are the, the cause, cause of all motion in, in the universe. universe. I wonder if they'll be able to figure out what the important thing about forces in motion is by the end of this book. I wonder if it keeps repeating to remind us. I hope so. The important thing about forces in motion is that forces are all around us, and they are the cause of all motion in the universe. Sir Isaac Newton is a scientist in England who discovered gravity, the invisible force that causes things to fall toward the ground. Legend says that Newton discovered gravity when he saw an apple fall from a tree. Now imagine you didn't know what gravity was, and all of a sudden you just see an apple fall to the ground. That would be kind of weird. That would be. While thinking about the forces of nature, Newton realized that some force must be acting on falling objects like apples because otherwise they would not start moving oh. from rest. This thinking led him to define and develop three laws of motion which explain how things move. Now, an apple is held to the tree by that stem. Mm -hmm. So as that apple gets heavier and heavier, that stem gets weaker. Mm -hmm. But if there was no gravity, the apple wouldn't move. It would just stay there on the tree. But because of gravity, as this gets looser and looser, it falls. it falls. If there was no gravity, I could let go of this and it would just stay hung in the air like this. But I can't do it because there's gravity here. Kind of like the astronaut's tear. Yeah, how it was just staying right, right there. there. It wasn't running down. Mm -hmm because of the lack of gravity. Interesting. Yes, Mr. Kevin. And I was just thinking, you know, if, if, you, if you applied a force to chili straight up, right? Yeah. So in other words, you're throwing chili straight up, right? He comes back down. He comes back down, but right at the top, when he stops moving in the upward direction, oh. yep. at that moment, the force of gravity and the force you applied- Were the same. We're the same. It's a balanced force. Right there where it's not moving and then whoop, he falls back down. Sorry, Chelly. Mm -hmm. That reminds me <laughs> when I was younger, I was a cheerleader and we did stunts and I was the one they tossed. And I remember when learning that when you get to the top and you feel yourself stop moving, that's when you have to change position to be caught. So yeah. I felt that, that moment. zero gravity yeah. moment. Oh, I've also felt it like on a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Or in an elevator. Or like when I'm like coming down with an airplane. Yes. Mm. Oh no, I'm good. Chili's fine, I'll get him Chili's later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kevin was so kind, he was gonna toss me his chili. That was kind of you. Not the food chili, chili the penguin. However, Kevin, the, the important thing, thing about forces, forces in motion is that forces are all around us. And they are the cause for all motion in the universe. universe. I wonder if they can say it with us. Say it with us. The, the important, important thing, thing about forces in motion is that forces are all around us and, and they are the cause of all motion in the universe. universe. Hmm. Some forces are invisible. We can't see them, but they are there. Try it out. Teacher, let go of this page. Well, it's on my computer, so I'll let go of Rafa. What happened? Fell. Rafa fell. Rafa fell. Yes, Rafa fell to the floor or the table. This is because of gravity. Gravity is a force in our atmosphere that pulls most items back down to the ground. You can't escape it. Hmm. I wonder if the third graders are noticing the bold text. Oh. 
Now, Authors use that to help draw mm -hmm. our attention to I important made things. it colored so it really drew our attention because mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to see on a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So forces, gravity, atmosphere. Ah, our vapor bubble. Our vapor bowl. <laughs> Okay, imagine the last time you went down the slide and what happened to your hair. Or a time when you touched your friend and felt a zing, zing. or a zap. This is called static electricity. Oh, Mrs. Wally. <laughs> I have this plastic bag. Mm -hmm. You can try this out at your house. We're gonna see if I can get some good static yeah. electricity going. Are we ready? Okay, I'm gonna just... You might have done this with a balloon before. Yep. Oh, look at that! Oh, dear. Oh, I can feel it lifting on my head. Yes. Mr. Kevin, can you make... Yeah. Let's see if I can get it to lift up. Oh, we gotta do it again. more static. More of an electric charge. Keep making that electric charge. There you go. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can do this and I can feel it start to move on my head. Yep, it's starting wow. to lift. Woo! That's neat. So you used friction? I used some friction to cause static electricity. It works much better with a balloon. It does, yeah. Um, and you can really get your hair just like, I want to tell you a little tip and trick for people. Oh. If you're outside on a summer day or a winter day and it looks cloudy outside, and all of a sudden you see people's hair start to float, mm -hmm. it's probably a good time to get inside. Why? That's oh. static electricity in the air, and it means there's probably going to be lightning. <gasps> oh. Mrs. Wally knows a lot about weather. I do. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world. So, other than Oliver. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, I learned that when I was playing soccer because it's really not safe to play soccer yeah. in a thunderstorm mm -hmm. because you're in an open field. Mm -hmm. So, if it looked like there were stormy clouds in the sky, my coach would always be watching us and go, oh, everyone's hair is starting to get staticky. I think we should call practice for the day. Wow. Yeah. So that's like reading the invisible forces. To tell us what might be coming next. It doesn't mean there's going to be lightning, but it right. means that it's probable. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? That is cool. Lastly, put two magnets near each other and watch what happens. Now, Miss Oslin, do you think I can make this magnetic toy fall over without touching it or blowing on it? Make it fall over without mm -hmm. touching it or blowing on it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kevin, you can make the big screen. Yeah. Do you think I can do that? I think you have a magnetic personality, <laughs> but no, I don't think you, you can ready? do that. You ready? <gasps> you did it! Well, let's do it this way so they can see that I didn't touch it. Oh, there it goes. I've got another angle here too. Let me do, let me run that one. See what you. Uh... Okay, let's try again. Ooh, that one it attracted. Did you see that? Oh. Okay. <gasps> wow. Invisible force, you can't see it. But it's making it move. It's a push or a pull. Wow. Isn't that cool? Magnets are cool. I wonder if I flip it this way, what it'll do. Magnets are really cool. I wonder how it decides if it's going to attract or propel or We're gonna learn about repel, that. Repel, I guess. But different magnets have a different type of force. Oh. We're gonna learn about that later. That's exciting. Okay. We did not read about that in our other book. We did not. This is new this information. This is new information. However, However, the important, important thing about forces in motion is that, that their forces are all around us and they, they are, are the cause of all motion in the, in the universe. universe. I wonder if we asked, what is the cause of all motion, motion in the, the universe? universe? If students could answer that. I bet they could. Force it out of them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the important, important thing, thing about forces in motion is that forces are all around us and, and they are the cause of all motion in the universe. universe. 
An object cannot move unless there is a force causing it to move. But why won't a swing keep swinging back and forth forever? Oh. Or why does the ball eventually stop rolling and become still? That's because of friction. Oh. Anytime two objects rub against each other, they cause friction. Friction works against the motion and acts in the opposite direction. Some surfaces create a lot of friction, like sand or grass, and some will have very little, like wood floors or an ice skating rink. Mm. Even air causes friction, and that's why a swing always comes back to rest. Air causes friction. Because it has density to it. Yes. Huh. Now, we could not take you to an ice skating rink, so I made one. Kind of, it's starting to melt. <laughs> but there's still ice here, you see, and some water. water. <laughs> it's like an ice skating rink into a pond. <laughs> and Miss Oslin brought in some sand, also known as sugar. <laughs> we used what we had at our home so that we could play around with friction. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to move these with my magnet. Okay. First in the sand to see how well it moves. Let's see if I can get it to come close to me. Let's see how well this. I'm gonna try and push it. <laughs> Maybe an inch. Yeah, not very far. Let me get a little closer before you do the next attempt Kay. there. Let's see. I had to get really you close did. to it to get it to move. And if I try and push this force, I'm barely tapping it. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm gonna put it here on the ice. Oh. Well, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> it does have a slope, but this had a slope. Yes. Now let's see what happens here. Oh, you didn't have to get as close. I didn't have to get as close. It like spun. Did it, it do that in the no, sugar? No, you can see the straight tracks there in the sugar. Look how easy it is to get that to move. Oops, do, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go to the other camera angle and you can do it one more time. Oh, there, there we go. Yeah, fun. Wow. Now I'm gonna do my little flick. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it went really far. It went really far. Good thing it has that edge to stop the motion. Right? Okay, now we're gonna go back in here and dry it off. Now, these sides are the same, they're just different colors. I wanna put the non wet side mm. down on the sugar. <laughs> Let's try this again. Uh, it's ooh. not even moving, like it's, it's trying stuck. to lift up. It's Oh, that's the uh, repulsion. Yeah, but when I did that here, it made it spin and, mm -hmm. here, we'll go this way. It's on the top of a hill. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's digging in. And then here at the top of the hill, as long as it doesn't move. Yeah. Wow. That's a big difference in movement. Big difference. Same force applied, mm -hmm. magnet, same object, same weight different frictions. I wonder how knowing this can help us solve problems. Right. Yes, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kevin? I was just gonna say the same thing, and I wonder if our, if our students now have a clue as to why skating on ice is so much more fun than skating on sand. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a kind of in between, now this is similar to ice, Ice is super slippery though. It has mm -hmm. that water on it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this here on the wood table. Oh, that moved quickly. Yeah. Oh, where are you? Rep Come on, repulsion, there we go. It's moving better than the sand. Yes, mm -hmm. but it's not spinning like on it's the ice. It's not spinning like on the ice, and if I flick it, that's the same force yeah. I flicked with. It's not. Yeah, it went a couple. On the ice, yeah. 
it goes really far. I don't know if Mr. Kevin, you can get this angle over here. Sure, let me try. Hang on a second. Uh, I know that's, I'm moving all around. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. No, Kevin. No, no problem. Uh, there we there go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so again, that totally would have different. kept going. That would have kept going. If the side wasn't there. Right. But if I do it here on the table. But on the table. Whoop. Can't use magnets. Then it changes the weight, and that's a different variable. It stops. It stops. There's more friction. Yeah. Right. There's nothing stopping it mm -hmm. other than the friction. Mm -hmm. Where that, what had to stop it was the edge of the pan. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? That's very cool. Okay, back to our book. Okay. And we read all this. We did. Okay. However, However even knowing all of that, the, the important thing, thing about forces in motion, motion is, is that, that forces are all around us and they are, are the cause of all motion in, in the universe. universe. So this is our glossary. In the back of this book, we have all of the terms that were in bold with their definitions and how to say them. We won't go oh, through them, nice. no. but they're there if we needed to reference them. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. So knowing all of that, how do forces help us solve problems? Hmm. Hmm. Knowing that friction can change it, mm -hmm. the propulsion can change, mm -hmm. that's what you're gonna write about today. Mm -hmm. Thinking about what we did, the static electricity, what kind of problems could that help us solve? Yes. Magnets, what kind of problem could that help us solve? Knowing about friction, what kind of problem could that help us solve? Do you know what I'm thinking about? What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about when there's ice on the road. Oh, yeah. And how that can be really slippery and what? how they solve that problem is. Uh, oh, we're not gonna say it though. I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, ooh, that's a good one. Okay, friends, just a quick think about. Yeah. What, are you, what did you think you knew about forces? Look back at that table you made. What did you want to learn? And is there anything you want to add that you want to learn? Because yes. sometimes as you start learning, then you want to learn more things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I'm really curious about ice and with water on ice, if that changes the friction of just rather than just ice. Oh yeah. I'm curious about that. I am too. Hmm. Something to think about. And that's what you're going to write about. You'll remember one or more paragraph and you can send it to us here in at our TV, TV classroom. classroom. Mr. Kevin, how can they send us their work? Well, all you have to do is email us at tvclassroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. Remember, take that cell phone, take a snapshot, load it into your email as an attachment, easy as that. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way with a mail mm -hmm. and an envelope and a stamp to the headquarters of TV Classroom here at 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Thank you so much, Mr. Kevin. Oh, our affirmation. I love ending this way every time. I love when we say positive things about ourselves. Me too. It really does help my brain feel in the green zone. It does. Mm -hmm. Now, we did a lot of experimenting. It was so fun. And questioning. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to remind ourselves that I can be curious. Yes. In fact, the best scientists are the most curious. So let's all take a deep breath and say our affirmation. I, I can, can be, be curious. curious. Third graders, thank you so much for being here in our TV classroom today. Mm -hmm. Now go off and investigate. Be curious. Bye, Bye. friends. See ya. Hey, young aviators, did you know that we live in an amazing state? Not only is Washington famous for its spectacular scenery,
but did you know that Washington State is famous for making airplanes? So today, we will be using our arms muscular strength to fly around Washington State and see how beautiful it is. All you have to do is put your arms out when the bald eagle takes off from her totem pole and keep them flapping until she makes it back to her totem pole safely. Now, your arms might get a little tired, but that's okay. That's how we build our muscular endurance. Don't stop flapping until you land. Have a great flight.